Good morning. Well, my name is Hannah. <laughs> um, I have a lot of people here supporting me this morning, so. Um, but good morning. I want to start off this morning with a story. So, one day, I was sitting on a park bench, and there was this man who was walking my direction. He had crutches, and he was kind of limping along. I didn't see a cast, so I didn't really know what was wrong. And in that moment, I had this like overwhelming surge that I needed to go pray for him and pray for healing. I'd never done this before. I knew in that moment that that thought was God because I would never think about stepping out of my comfort zone in that way. And I was like, oh my gosh, like God, are you really asking me to go and pray for healing for this man? I sat on the edge of my be bench as he was like walking by, walking by, I'm like looking at him, like trying to be discreet as I'm wrestling in my head with God. God, are you asking me to do this? Are you asking me to do this? There's no way you're asking me to do this. And as I'm sitting there, I'm watching him walk, walk, walk until he's out of sight. And I thought, oh, okay, Lord. I missed my moment. I'm so sorry. I guess I'll just have to move on. And I just tried after that moment, of that moment passing by, to, to sit with like, well, maybe that wasn't God. But because I had such a discomfort in my heart, in my just being, that I just knew it was God inviting me to pray for this man, and I missed my moment. Jump forward a few years later. I am standing on a street corner in the Tenderloin District of San Francisco, and I see this lady crossing the street towards me, hobbling along with her one cane, and that image of that man came back to me as I thought, oh, I think I'm supposed to pray for this woman and pray for healing for her knee. There had been a time gap that happened, so I had grown in a little bit more confidence. I had a little bit more faith that maybe this is something God still does to this day is heal people. And as I'm watching her come towards me, I'm, I stop her and I said, hi, do you mind if I pray for you? And she said, sure, honey, why not? And I said, okay, great, like my name is Hannah, what's your name? And she said, Linda. I said, okay, Linda, like I just have this feeling that I should pray for your knee. Is that okay? And she said, yeah, of course, absolutely. She was so sweet, she was so open and just warm and kind, just from that two second interaction I just knew. So, I asked her if I could put my hand on her knee, and she said yes, to pray for it. And I said, Linda, what's your pain level right now? She said, a 10. I said, okay, well, I'm just, I'm just gonna pray. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, please heal Linda's knee. Let everything that's wrong with it come into rightness and be healed in the name of Jesus. I didn't, I remember not having much confidence. It just was like, okay, I think this is what I'm supposed to say in this moment. So I look at Linda and I said, Linda, what's your pain level now? And she said, a seven. And I was like, okay, <laughs> this is kind of cool. Like my confidence was kind of increasing because again, I'd never experienced this before. And maybe, just maybe God's actually healing this person right in front of me. So I put my hand back on her and I asked if I could pray again because I was confident that God wanted to heal her. And she said, sure, why not? So I prayed again. And this time I looked at Linda and I said, Linda, what's your pain level now? And she said, a zero. She was grinning from ear to ear. She had put all of her weight onto the leg that was hurting her. And she grabbed her cane and she gave a fist pump in the air. She was <laughs> so excited. It was beautiful, it was beautiful to see just the glow that she had and also on my end, just the like shock of like, whoa, this actually happened, oh my goodness. Okay, God, you are still alive, you're active and present in our life and you heal people, whoa. And never in my life have I ever seen 
a woman walked down the sidewalk as she walked away from me. She literally gave a booty shake and a skip at the same time because she was <laughs> dancing down the sidewalk with joy. It was like the most beautiful thing ever. So why do I share that this morning? Not only to hopefully maybe increase your faith that these things do happen today, but also to look at Linda's life. Linda had, she, I was a stranger to her, and she had such an openness about her, such a willingness to receive something good and kind from a stranger. And I think a lot of times in our life, we don't have that same perception, especially to strangers. I don't know about you, but I kind of like tighten up when I'm like with strangers because I don't know what they're about. But she was open to receive. Now, the thing I failed to mention is that when I was in the Tenderloin District in San Francisco, I was there serving alongside a nonprofit who does great work in that community. So they're the ones who had encouraged us to walk along the streets and connect with people and just pray for people. And the day before I met Linda, the team had instructed us to, hey, let's write letters of encouragement to people. And we're just going to pass it out on the street. That sounds so fun. I'm like, okay. So I wrote five letters that day. I didn't know when I met Linda, and I said hello to her, and I handed her a letter upon my introduction. I just said, oh, it's just a little note of encouragement. She said, oh, great. And then that's when I asked her if I could pray for her. That in that letter, I had written, again, I did not know who I was giving this letter to, this verse that said, Daughter, it is because of your faith that you have been healed. I had no idea that that's what I was writing and that that experience would happen, that God would actually heal her until later. And when I was remembering later that day that she was healed and I wrote that verse on there, I thought, oh my gosh, Linda had such an openness and such a faith to see something miraculous happen. It was so cool. So how often in our life are we over here on this end of the spectrum living clenched? Can you feel it? Just feel it. <sighs> this world, my relationship, these people. Oh, just closed fist. And we can get stuck in this way so easily because it feels kind of good to hold on to my anger against that person. It feels kind of nice to just rest in my bitterness and my resentment. It feels easy to hold on to my jealousy. I know I'm not alone because I know we all struggle with this. And like I said, this, uh, that calloused feeling in our gut, that feeling of that rock in our heart, that is easy. What is hard is to move over here, hands relaxed. I can give, I can receive. I have a presence about myself that is just warm and welcoming. You know those people, those people who just like love easily and are kind, who give generously, who are hospitable, and just like welcome you in? That, that is hard. So, this morning, I am talking about something called the fruit of the Spirit. Or in other words, the consequences of being in relationship with God. So, I'm going to begin by first off reading a verse from Galatians where hopefully this will give you some understanding on why this part, living over here, is easy. So we're going to start with Galatians 5, 19. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, 
outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. When I read that, I can't help but look at my life and think, whoa. I fall into a lot of those categories. And it feels like unfortunate. I really want to say, like, unfortunately, that's the truth. But we all do because we're, we're human. And like I said, that's the easy realm to live in. For my personal life, last year, my family and I had some problems that we were working through. This year, we've mended, we begin to reconcile, there's been healing in our family. But sometimes, randomly, I will get these spurts of just like anger as I reflect on last year. And I don't know what to do about it. So I call up my boyfriend and I'm like, hey, let me just like vent for a second. I'm like picking apart all the things I'm angry about and I'm just like, ugh. But the reason why is because there is this thing inside of me that is just knotted up. And it's like, I don't really know how to loosen it. I don't really know what to do about it. I know there's a root problem in my life that I need to figure out in order for those random spurts of anger to come out. But I'll be, I'll be honest with you. A lot of the times I like don't want to deal with that anger because I'm not ready or it just feels like just this negativity that I just want to ignore. And that's okay because... God doesn't push his agenda on us. There's no timeline for this healing, but there is an invitation for healing. That he says, hey, Hannah, whenever you're ready, like, let's talk through it. Let's work through it together. You need a listening ear? Okay. You want some truth and some wisdom on how to go about it? If you're willing to listen, like, I'm happy to give it. That's who God is in this tension that I hold within myself. So, now that we've talked about human nature, the easy part of living, I wanna talk about the effects of living and pushing in, challenging yourself to be close to God. What happens then? How does my life change? If we continue on in Galatians 5, We read on to verse 22. But the Holy Spirit, another name for God, produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It would be so nice if loving and being joyful and peaceful and finding a centeredness within myself was easy. And that's just the challenge that we live in today is just this like budding heads of like the way we want to live because it just feels kind of good to have a frenzy with jealousy or having a, a, this connection to holding on to things. But I promise you that when you begin to just, even a finger, okay, here you go, God. Just one finger. Just, okay, I still want to hold on to it, but I'll give you this one thing. He will take that thing and he'll begin to work with it to move us towards the fruits of the Spirit, living a life of love and of joy and of peace. Who doesn't want that? So, how do we get the fruits of the Spirit? How do we move from this camp over to this camp? What does that look like? Well, we're going to read Jeremiah chapter 17. That will hopefully give us some clarity. It says, This is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength, and turn their hearts away from the Lord, They are like stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. They will live in the barren wilderness in an uninhabited salty land. 
But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. We are like the trees and God is like the riverbank. Oh, how he longs just to fill our veins with his life-giving essence and presence for his grace to fall on us like a dew and us to receive it. He wants to sustain our life and he wants to help us grow. And I know it's so easy to think that that is not who God is, that that is not his nature, that that is the opposite of maybe you've heard or experienced growing up. But I promise it's true. So, just like trees, they grow up towards the sunlight, towards that nourishing effect of the light and the beams and the rays. And that's how we are too. We externally experience a growth when we hang out with God. (laughs) But there is a second type of growth that happens. And this is where we grow down. Just like trees, They have roots. Those roots are not seen, but when the seed is planted, that's what grows first. Just like our life, when we let God into our life, it's an internal emotion that happens first before the effects come out. There's just things that we're like, okay, God, I can just give this to you. Can you do something with it? My relationship with my husband is terrible. What is this about? It it feels like it's just him, him, him. But maybe there's something in me too. God, I invite you into it. Maybe you have an anger problem with your children. Maybe you don't know how to control it, but you really want to. God, will you help me? It's those invitations internally into our life that God begins to soften up. Almost like a balm for our soul. Just this like warmth, like okay, this is doable, this is, actually, I can have hope that maybe I can change. There's just something that happens when we give our life to God and we give the things we're struggling with to God. So, I want us to all reflect this morning. What is it that you feel like you're in need of? What from God do you feel like you want to ask for? In what ways do you feel like you're lacking? Are there things over on this camp where you're just like, I've been holding on to this thing for years. I can't forgive. Maybe I have an addiction. Maybe there's something, maybe it's just something as minute as like, I just, I lie. Like small little white lies all the time. It's just easy for me. You don't think there's any effect to it. What is it over here that you feel like you're living your life? And how do you want to change? Do you need love? Do you need peace? Do you need gentleness? Do you need kindness? Do you need patience? Do you need self-control? What is it that you need this morning? I'm gonna invite us into an activity Don't worry, you don't have to move. We're gonna have two people come along the sides who are gonna help pass out clipboards, pens, and paper. And as this is going around, I want you to think of this question, what do you need? Because I am so confident In the same manner that I was confident that God had wanted to heal that man that I didn't pray for, in the same manner that I was confident that God wanted to heal Linda, I am confident this morning that God wants to meet you right here exactly where you are. And he doesn't want to meet you in this like manner of like, well, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say that because God can meet you in whatever way possible. But the image I get is of like a warm hug, (laughs) a gentle friend, Just that feeling of just like peace and calm and centeredness. You know, like, 
I'll have to use this example from this morning. Like, I was nervous to come up here. And my mom said, it's okay, you got it. Like, that's like God's voice. Just that like, hey, it's okay. You've got it. So, on your paper, and before you start, I'm going to have us write for five minutes. The prompt for this note is, God, I need. And you're going to write to God for five minutes. And I want to encourage you to just be as open as possible. But before you begin writing, here's the kick. I'm going to ask you to take the pen out of your dominant hand and put it into your non-dominant hand to write this letter. I will tell you why afterwards, so you will have to humor me just for the next five minutes. But as we think this through, I just want to invite you guys to just, what do you need? Ask God. Be as big and boisterous as you feel like you need to. Just whatever it is. Don't hold back. We're going to begin our timer now as our team strums in the background. So enjoy. Thank you. 
Why did I have us right with our non-dominant hand? It's because I wanted you to remember what it was like to be childlike before God. You know, when a kid falls down and scrapes his knee and he starts crying and he runs up to his parent, instinctually the parent just knows it's gonna be okay, it's all right, let me see, let me look at it. Do you need a Band-Aid? Okay, I'll get you a Band-Aid. We'll get you some help. In the same way, God just instinctually knows. He already knew what you needed before you wrote it down, but I wanted you to know what you needed from God because maybe you just haven't thought about it in a while. Maybe you haven't connected with God like this in a while. So, there is a part two to this activity. Either on the bottom half of your paper or on the back side, I'm gonna have you write again. This time with your dominant hand. And here's what I'm having you write. I'm inviting you to write and to feel what God's response to your letter, to your note, to your prayer would be. Now remember, God's voice and tone and presence is this, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. He has the aura of just the like, oh, I love you. So as don't overthink it, just feel what you think God would say to you. But if any point you hear, shame on you, I'm disappointed, you messed up, anything condescending, that's your own voice, that's not God's voice. So hone in on that, hone in on this loving voice. Think of the most loving person in your life who just spews encouragement and love. That is gonna be like the voice of God. So I'm gonna give us five more minutes to write God's response to your note, what you think it would be. We can begin now.
as you finish up writing, I hope you experienced that sort of kindness, that sort of love, that sort of goodness. Because the truth is, God wants good things for you. He wants you to, to come to him because he wants to enhance your life. He doesn't want to invade it. He wants to partner alongside of you to bring this good fruit. Again, as you're planted by the riverbank of his goodness and his faithfulness, that you would grow. And the fruits of the Spirit are to help you know that you are growing healthily. But just as the tree has little knowledge of the fruit it's producing, so you too. That you would grow and you would just be like, oh wow, whoa, I've changed. There's something different about me. Oh, whoa, people are complimenting me in this way or saying I'm different? That's the kind of life-giving effect that happens as you continue to press into God. Do you remember Linda? At the end of me praying for her, she looked at me and she said, you know, what is this, magic? And I laughed and I smiled and I said, no, Linda, it's God. God healed you, God loves you. And I got to share the love of God with her because I, in my former years had experienced the love of God and now I was able to give and that is the key takeaway from today that though God desires to partner with you because he loves you it is also for the benefit of others and for those around you it's for your spouse it's for your friend it's for your neighbor it's for your coworker. this growth that happens will just ooze there's an aroma about you that changes that affects the people in your life That's what God wants for you. Freely you received, now freely you give. So I'm gonna pray, and Ryan's gonna come up and we're gonna transition.